for he must reign, till he hath put all enemies under his feet, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 25 and 26. So many of us have been harmed by death. Death comes to our family and takes our precious loved ones. Our lives are forever changed. People spend their entire lives trying to reconcile with the idea of death. Poets try to tame it, songwriters try to downplay it, but the fact remains that sooner or later death shows up. A hated enemy. This passage assures us that one day death as we know will be defeated, and not just death. All enemies will be under the feet of Christ, for those who have felt plagued by the enemies of this world. This promise is welcome. There will come a day when we don't have to dread a confrontation with an enemy of any kind. Christ will keep his promise and destroy all who dare to come against his people. Psalms 34 verse 6 says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The Lord draws close to the brokenhearted. God doesn't delight in seeing his children being in pain. When he hears our cries, he rushes to our aid. He comforts us, he heals us, and he helps us get back on our feet. We can always find reassurance in God. He is always ready to give his love and his support, always. Devotion topic is, there have been many kings, but only one God. If you come from the Western Hemisphere and have studied history, there is a decent chance that you have heard of the notorious Henry VIII. Infamous for his romantic exploits and treacherous betrayals, King Henry VIII also gained notoriety for the schism with the Catholic Church in 1534. This may lead you to believe that he was a pious believer of God, but when you consider the litany of sins that he publicly committed, I think it is fair to say that he may have thought of himself on nearly the same level as God. The verses in this devotional discuss the importance that Timothy placed on all people, regardless of their position or status in life, giving thanks and praise to God. No matter the conditions or the situation that we live, it is important to give our thanks and praise. The way that we worship the Lord is usually done in an environment of calm and serene communion. I feel this is true for the home or church as if is for our greater society, whether we are King Henry VIII or an ordinary citizen. It is our duty to labor for God and partake in his creation and support and nurture one another. If we dare to dream of the world, we wish to inhabit as one conducive to worshiping his name, then it begins with generosity towards one's fellow man. Find the way that you feel most comfortable worshiping God and give generously to him. No matter what is going on in your life or around you, we owe everything to him. Prayer, Lord above, open my heart towards your creation. I ask that you grant me the strength to pray for those who do not pray for me. Humble me in thy sight, magnificent God, so that I may have an honest and clean heart to serve thee with, in turn serving my fellow man. Grant me all this Lord, so that your creation, as it is in heaven, may all sing your praises. Amen.